Hello, I'm Atuba George, and this is this is just getting interesting. We're in First Corinthians chapter four, and yesterday we stopped at verse seven. Let's see how the Lord's going to help us to take more verses today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today, even as we take this time, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I just heard the Lord say to me that you who take out time to receive my word and to receive my instructions, I'm going to multiply time to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you are going to function with so much ease. You're going to accomplish many things with such a short time that will cause men to marvel. And it is because you have dedicated yourself to seeking my truth. And it costs time. But because you spend it with me, I will multiply time to you, saith the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. So we receive today's daily bread. Hallelujah. And you magnify yourself in us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now he says, verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. For who maketh thee to differ from one another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why do thou glory? As if thou hast not received it. Everything you own, and from anointing to physical things, you received it. Except it's not God that gave it to you. You can get things by yourself. You can work hard and, and get things. But you see, when we're talking about, here Paul is talking about in the context of the Lord. If it is the Lord that is giving it to you, then you received it. See, you received it. So, so Paul is saying here that you received it. However you received it from the Lord, you received it. So someone can say, I fasted for so long, then I received it. Another person said, the Lord just told me, go there. And I went there and I received it. So, so now someone says, it was the fasting. No, it's not the fasting. It's just that it took the first man 40 days to hear God say, go there. And he obeyed the Lord. Another person just woke up from sleep and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? God said, go there. Thank you, sir. And he went there. So you see, in both cases, it's not the Lord that demands a long fast from you before he gives you something. He demands your obedience. So to one, because of your frame, because of your many disobedience, you need 40 days fast to break everything in you so that you can obey God. Another who has trained himself to always obey the Lord will obey the Lord just like this. Now, the one who always fast for long, so, so I've not heard God for a while. Though. I know what to do. Anytime I fast and pray, at least three days, that's when God speaks to me. You have a problem. See, you have a problem. You, you, you see, it's different when you, you know, uh, you know, for example, you know, just like a husband and wife in the house, they, these two people live in the same house, they eat together, you know, they sleep on the same bed, and you, you still find a wife that will say to the husband, honey, Please, can I talk to you when you come back from work today? And then you're wondering. <laughs> talk. Now, now, a man knows that when a wife says that, your heart goes, okay, this is a serious matter then. <laughs> but the, you, I don't understand. You guys woke up on the same bed. You guys eat together. What is that thing? You know, she, she wants that time where every attention is on her. And that's the same thing with the Lord. The Lord can be speaking to you every day. You're hearing the voice of God every day. But you don't take it for granted. Because there are times the Lord is going to tell you, look, I want you to separate yourself. I want to do something. I want to tell you something. And then you just know that the Lord is about to tell you something very serious. So he needs all of your attention. Yes, the Lord does that many times with his children. See, so we don't fast because we, 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 we want to, or sometimes you are, you are searching the scriptures. Now I've always said this. How many times have you taken a fast because of a scripture you don't understand? Or because of, some, Daniel did that. He saw something from the book of Jeremiah. And he said, wait, I don't get. How? 70 years. And what's going on here? And he decided to fast. Now what was the purpose of his fast? Father, if you spoke to Jeremiah, then that word came, if that word came from me, then it is true. Then you can speak to me concerning it. 
That's what he was looking for. And you should do that. When you don't understand something, don't go around looking for who to ask. Ask the Lord. Lord, what's your mind concerning this? And there are times you're like, okay, Lord, I've been asking this thing. You don't want to say, I'm taking it fast because I really need to, to get your attention to know this thing. You don't fast to buy a car. You don't fast to get a job. You may get a job when you fast. But you see, God's not going to give you that car before because you fasted. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, so he's saying in essence that you received it. So don't start thinking, how did how I, I suffered to receive it? No, the word of the Lord gave it to you. Praise God. Verse 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God that ye I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God had set forth us, the apostles, last. As it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. What's Paul saying? He's saying, look, we that are apostles, it, it appears, now this is not a finality. He's just saying, because based on what he's saying, he said, it appears God set us last. In other words, so we are behind the scene walking. You guys are taking all the glory. See? That's what he's talking about. Now, this is what every pastor must understand. This is what every, every, every custodian or steward of the mysteries of Christ should understand. Most times, we are behind the scene. See? We are behind the scene doing the work. And then the people that see the, they receive the glory are those that are in front. Now, but, but those who are really doing the work, holding them up, bringing forth the wisdom of God, they are behind the scene. So Paul was saying, hey, you guys are enjoying. You guys are reigning. Praise God. <laughs> All right, then. Look at what he says. Well, he said, because God has made us a spectacle to the world and to angels and to men. So someone is looking at you. say, well, you say, know, what, what does this man even do? They are always wondering what we do. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what do, what do preachers do? What, you know, pastor, what do pastors, which work are pastors doing? You will find out when the hidden things shall be revealed. <laughs> Praise God. So he says, for, for I think that God, okay, no, verse 10. He said, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. See? We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even until unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling places, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the fields of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. We are the ones taking all the heats. <laughs> Praise God. That's what Paul was saying. We are the ones taking all the heats. We are the ones insulted. You guys are going out there, you're doing well. But we are the ones receiving the heats, both spiritual and even physical. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray, you know, sometimes you, you, you just wish that. Uh, okay, let's go for that. Verse 14, he says, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Oh. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me now you you see paul saying here that hey you don't have ten thousand instructors you you may have ten thousand he said you may have ten thousand instructors but you don't have as many fathers and then he goes on to say look in christ jesus it is me that begot you in the gospel now this doesn't mean he's 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 arguing uh, who who you should listening to or you know sometimes say oh if you're a member of this church you shouldn't listen to another preacher now that's that's wrong that that is okay, wrong but you see also 
as, as a minister or, or as a pastor or as one who, who's got people that you are nourishing with the word of the Lord. He said some, Paul said some, said, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Now what does it mean, be followers of me? He's not just saying, do everything. You know, Jesus actually said, don't call anyone on earth your father. But God, because God is your father. Now Paul wasn't saying here, call me papa. That's not what Paul was saying. You know, like some say, you know, papa or daddy or pastor. And when people don't call them that they're offended. Come on. Come on. <laughs> now then, that's not what Paul was talking about. What Paul was talking about here was the walk. He said, look, be followers of me. In other words, look, I have, I have submitted myself. Now, before you would say be followers of me, you, you must be sure that you yourself have, have wallowed in the word of the Lord. You see, your personality has been interchanged with God's truth. Now, because you've, you've gotten to that point where you're so submitted to the Lord and you don't have, no man sees any life that is yours anymore. So when Paul was saying, be followers of me, he meant what he was saying because I follow Christ. That's what he was. Ah, the only life I know. I don't have any life of my own. I'm following Christ and it is so beneficial to me. Praise God. So if you follow me doing this thing that I'm doing, you know, just saying, listen to only me. No, follow the things that I do. You know, like people say, do what I say, don't do what I do. That's, that's wrong. Praise God. So, so follow. That's why he's saying follow. Praise God. So, he said, for this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you unto remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ. Did you see that? I've sent Paul to you because they have not seen him for a while. Now, you see, that's why it's important, you know, even as a pastor, you must be sure, you know, since you, know, you, you, know, you, have a, you have a pastor, you don't even know how he lives his life. You don't know. You only see him on the pulpit and he preaches the word of the Lord to you. And after the pulpit, you'd never see him again. You'll never have any relationship with him. You can, how, how do you follow him? See, how do you follow him? And that's why I told you this. Your pastor, one, one, way, one way you would know someone is your pastor is that your spirit agrees with his testimony of Christ. Now, what does it mean his testimony of his experience in Christ? So a pastor's job is not to go. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. And he talks and explains the Greek and explains the Hebrew and explains all the talk and he's done. No. What is the testimony of your life in this thing that you have read? That's what people see and they follow. See, people want to know how do you how do you handle your bills? People want to know, how do you handle your superiors? How do you handle issues? They want to see that. Because that's what they follow. Praise God. All right. Then. <clears throat> so Paul said, that's the reason I've sent Timothy to you. What's Timothy going to do? Tell you, he'll bring you up to speed to the kind of, you know, the new things that's going on in our life, the testimonies that's going on in our life. That's Timothy's job. <laughs> Praise God. He says, it says, unto you remem who, shall bring, uh, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now it says, now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. Praise God. Oh, we're in verse 18 already. Praise God. So, so let's see how, how the Lord's going to help us and, and see where we're going to stop this week. I'm going to continue from verse 18 tomorrow because our time is up. Praise God. Today I declare over your life. Things that you have been looking for for long. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They are coming to you. Oh, oh, thank you, Jesus. You will find them today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.